If you're struggling with putting together a quick and easy budget for your business or life, you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how you can use JotForm to organize all of your budget needs using a very nice template that is available for free on their site. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about that, check out our YouTube channel. I will make sure that there is a link uh, below in the description of this video. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this. We are talking about building a quick and easy budget inside of JotForm. And wouldn't you know it, JotForm has put together some really great templates for us to choose from. So let's pop on into my screen here. You'll see that I am on the jotform.com slash table templates slash category slash budget. Don't bother typing all that out. We'll include a link below for this particular uh, website as well, where you can go and download your template. Uh, but I am specifically looking at budget sheets. Now there are a bunch of different templates that you can scroll through here. Grant budget, restaurant budget, personal budget, project budget. These are all fantastic, but I'm putting something together that's pretty quick and easy, and I really like this business budget template. So I'm just gonna pop in here. I can click use template, and it's instantly going to add the framework for this to my JotForm account. So I now have this one created for me, and I wanna draw your attention to a few of the really cool features of JotForm tables and uh, things that make this budget just really easy to use. Now, first and foremost, you'll notice that up here at the top of my screen on what could be called a toolbar, we have this spot where we see that this is grouped by month. So all of the data that we have here is actually being grouped by some month field. So I'm actually gonna remove this just for a moment so that we can take a different look at things. So breaking this down, you see that we have the expense here, then the type, which is you know the category that this is fitting into. We have an estimated cost for what we think this will you know, budget for. Uh, and then of course the actual cost. So what did we actually wind up spending on this thing? And then we're running a variance or a difference formula. So one of the things I want to pause and you know really highlight here is that the cool thing about using a jot form table is that the table is able to use some formulas that apply to the entire table. So in this case, you know, the variance or the difference of this particular budget it's taking that estimated cost that we start with and subtracting the actual cost. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about formulas, you can always open up an existing formula from a template and kind of figure out what's going on. So if you drop down here to the third from the bottom, you have the option to edit the formula. And you can then read through this formula and figure out more about what it's doing. In short, this is a pretty long formula. There's a logical statement, an if statement. It's finding out if the estimated cost is greater than or equal to the value. And if, the, if it is, then it will you know, do one thing. And if it's not, it will do another. Uh, basically though, long story short, this is just finding out what the difference is between these things. So in the case where we have 200 as the estimated cost and $320 as the actual cost, then of course we have a variance of a negative $120. So formulas are a great way that you can add additional value to your JotForm tables. And the thing that I really like about formulas is we don't actually have to enter this data in the form itself because the formula is going to be dependent upon these other things, namely in this case, the estimated cost and the actual cost. So if you're ever curious to know if there's more going on behind the scenes in your JotForm table than meets the eye, the first place to look would be to go in the upper right corner of your screen and to check out the columns here. This is gonna show you what columns are actually being shown or are made visible on your screen. But if you scroll down, you'll see that there are also very often some columns that are not being shown. In this case, we have month and a few different metadata uh, columns as well. So submission IP, submission date, when, it was, when was this last updated, and then also the submission ID. So in this case, maybe I wanna bring the month column in. So once I click that, then we see that month here. Now, if you recall, when we first downloaded this template, this was all starting with a grouping of, by month. So the nice thing about using the grouping feature is that we can bunch all of these records together and even collapse them. So we can say, hey, I wanna just expand February 
No, actually I wanna look more at you know March, and so you can really drill in there. So that's great, but the other fun thing about this is once you've grouped by this, you can actually then, with the push of one button, create a new tab for yourself. And that's what's showing up here at the top of our screen. If we look up at the top, we have our total budget, but then we can drill into these other sections here, and these are all grouped by month. And this is really nice and easy because now we can see all of the data that that you know is in the month of January for this case. And of course, this is applying this January filter, which is saying for this particular tab here, we only want to look at the data that fell in January. And so we're able to then create these, you know, just by pushing a quick button. So if I wanted to duplicate that January January tab, I could do so just by clicking create a new tab. And for this one to keep it separate, let me call it Jan star. And once I create that tab, you see then that that same filter is applied here. In this case, it's filtered to only the January entries. If I ever want to delete that tab or do anything else to it, I can go ahead and access that tab up at the top and perform whatever I need to to it. In this case, I'll get rid of it since I already have one. Now, one other place that you really want to pay attention to on your jot form table is the form itself. So the form is created alongside the table, right? Because a table is nothing without way to get data into it. And so that of course is JotForm's core competency, which is building the form. So to access this form, we can actually view the form, assign the form, or edit the form. Let's take a quick look at the edit function here, and we'll see what lives in our form at present. This is really straightforward. We have expense, type, planned expense, and month. So let's go ahead and just publish this form so that we can use it right here. I'll open this in a new tab, and the cool thing about, again, the forms in JotForm, as soon as data is entered into this form, it's going to automatically be reflected in our JotForm table. So let's say I have another expense. Uh, let's call it a software expense. I don't even know if this is a type in here. No, it's not. Uh, we'll call it training expense for the sake of this. Let's say we spent $500 on some software, or that was the planned expense, rather. And then we bring in our month. Uh, maybe this was uh, what we're planning for March. So we can submit this. Now, as soon as we submit that data, we can flip back into our table and see that that information has flowed through. So a couple of things to notice, this, this record right here demonstrates the new submission on the form. And the first thing you might notice is that we don't have a difference formula here, or rather we don't have a, a valid variance displaying. And that's because we don't have an actual cost. If you recall, our form doesn't ask for this. So our form is really just a way for people to submit the plan, and then we need to come back in after the fact and put in those actual numbers. So once we put in an actual here, let's say our actual cost was $450. As soon as we've done that, then our variance or our difference on our budget is showing up just fine. The other thing you'll notice is that our estimated cost does not show up with a dollar sign. And that's because in this particular template, this field or this column was built with a text box rather than a number field. So we need to then add that every time. If you wanted to get a little more granular with this, you could actually build a different uh, column here and make sure that to use the number field. When you use a number field, you have the ability of course to name it. Let's just call it EST cost. And here you can choose the precision in the number and also if you want it to display with a currency, and if so, you can choose your currency. So there are a lot more formatting features that are appropriate for numbers if you go that route, but of course you would then need to map your form to this particular one. I'll keep it with the original estimated cost, so I'll go ahead and delete that new column I added. That was really just for demonstration. But long story short, this is a great way for you to make sure that you have documented exactly what you are estimating for your different budget uh, types and expenses. And then you can also make sure to come back in and compare against those things, making sure that you know exactly what you did spend and check your variance. In this particular case, we would have gone under budget $50 in this case, over budget by $45 in this case. And at the end of the day, we're pretty much on track for the month.